Okay, uh, I wanted to get into the uh, the, the uh, origins of the uh, HARP program, and uh, you have to go way back to the Reagan era. We're talking about uh, the mid-80s, 1984, and uh, for those of you who are too young to remember it, it was a very tense time. Uh, the Cold War was in full swing. The threat of a, of a nuclear war escalating was very real. And uh, I was uh, just getting out of college, and I had uh, spent a year uh, pretty much as a journeyman learning the ropes of uh, fine woodworking in a very high-end cabinet shop in Chicago, Illinois, after I graduated from Northwestern College. And uh, I moved on from that. Uh, and decided to work for Greenpeace for about four years. I was very interested in the environment and protecting it and I was very much against nuclear proliferation and uh, nuclear war and nuclear energy and anything nuclear because it's extremely toxic and dangerous and uh, there's nothing good about it in my opinion. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people who feel otherwise but uh, I would hope that the Fukushima plant meltdown might uh, be changing some people's minds about that. But at any rate, uh, I think it would be uh, edifying to uh, show you uh, some documents that are posted up on the inventor of the, uh, the HARP program, Bernie Eastland, who at the time was uh, uh, working for ARCO, which is basically a gas exploration gas an oil and mineral company. It's massive. It's huge. And uh, they were interested in uh, how they could possibly use and sell something like 25 million cubic feet of gas. Uh, you know, what can we do with this? How can we get this? Well, this is really strange, right? You know, war, why would HARP be related to gas and gas exploration? Well, Bernie Eastland came up with this idea that he presented to ARCO that was so exciting to them uh, that uh, it, it blossomed almost immediately into a DOD uh, seed contract of about $300,000 to do some research into it. And uh, here, let me show you some documents here. It, you know, you can just go to this, this website. I'm going to link it. But I, I wanted to, to just show you I've got it blown up a little big on the screen so you can read it, but uh, at any rate, in, uh, on May 9th, 1984, uh, this report was presented to the president of ARCO, and uh, what it basically was about was uh, using the gas to power up a very, very powerful electromagnetic uh, array, uh, radio array, uh, ground-based. It's an electromagnetic alteration of the atmospheric, of the atmosphere, ionosphere, and magnetosphere for military and civilian applications. And it's uh, Robert L. Hirsch, uh, Bernard J. Eastland, and uh, Robert McDonald. And uh, this was presented to the Jasons, which is a Department of Defense think tank, and uh, they loved it. And uh, the potential applications were communications, disruption of communications, satellite submarine surveillance disruption, anti-missile shields, EMP modification, geophysical exploration, weather modification, notice weather modification, environmental modification, and nuclear winter cleanup. Fascinating, huh? They were uh, worried, of course, you know, there'd be a huge nuclear war and then nuclear winter, and then, you know, you, uh, how are we going to survive all this, okay? Uh, they're, they're enthusiastic about this, and they uh, went after an aggressive patent approach, of course, on it. And uh, they got facility clearance, and they started uh, ionospheric warfare briefing to a special DOD office, okay, and DARPA awarded uh, applications for an RF microwave energy beamed from ground to space, and they have a funding of uh, about three quarters of a million dollars for a 12-month effort for just basically to see if it would even work, okay, and uh, if you look here, you'll see uh, ionosphere and magnetosphere modification and ground power, space power beaming. Uh, you know, and you've got the 
uh, an investigation of creation of artificial ionospheric mirrors, AIMS, and their applications. Okay, and uh, you can see well, how that could be useful because you got over the over the horizon radar, and you've uh, which at that time was. Uh, Actually, there was an ABM treaty that uh, did not permit that, so in order to get around that, they made this a civilian project. So the whole HARP deal started as a way for ARCO to sell a shit ton of gas. Fascinating, huh? And you can see these are the three original slides that were presented to ARCO. Can you imagine this whole program <laughs> was presented by some stuff that looked like a couple of drunks drew on some <laughs> cocktail napkins. You know what I'm saying? But uh, as you can see, the, 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 the guy was brilliant. And he'd already worked out all the uh, science to it and all the ener you know, energy needs for it. And to produce the massive amount of wattage, you've got to burn a shit ton of gas through some turbines and, and make the power. So it worked out great for Arco. And I just thought that that would be interesting to know. That that's where it all began. And right from the very beginning, it was a weather modification program. So it's interesting, you know, that the website now is all cleaned up and all looks all beautiful and everything. You go to the HARP website now, there's, you know, oh, there's nothing classified. No, this is a civilian program, blah, blah, blah. It's run by DARPA. It was started by the DOD. It was a Jason's think tank. Like, wow, perfect. Wow, a missile shield. Wow, we can disrupt satellites. Wow, we can spy on everybody. This is awesome. So that's how HARP got started. Okay, I'm going to keep this one short. And uh, you'll find links to the documents in the notes. So uh, have fun with that. <laughs>